All right, how's it going, y'all? So today, we're gonna be going over five, and then a few honorable mention, Docker containers to install in Synology NAS to really get started from a home lab perspective and really start tinkering and learning Docker. These are gonna be five really great Docker containers that can really increase the functionality of your NAS and are great ways to start with home lab stuff. And so it can teach you not only how to deploy Docker containers, but also they add genuine functionality to your NAS that allows it to do so much more. I'm gonna start with my kind of top five, and then we're going to also go into a few honorable mentions right at the end here. I'm not actually gonna go over how to deploy each and every one of these, but I'm gonna talk about what I use them for and where I have deployed them in the past and why they're super useful to have. And then from there, none of these are hard to deploy at all. And the last thing before I actually go into this is you can deploy these using Container Manager. DSM 7.2 changed Docker to Container Manager. They have the same app effectively. It just allows you to use Docker containers, but on your NAS, you want to download Container Manager. But for number five, we're gonna start off with what's called Uptime Kuma. Uptime Kuma is a very, very, very easy to use monitoring program. Uptime Kuma is a great Docker container to deploy because it's gonna be able to monitor all of your other Docker containers. And so you can tell what's up and what's down. And it doesn't only monitor your Docker containers. It can also monitor pretty much anything really basically. Any website or basic server can be monitored by it. They have a, just a simple ping check to say, hey, is this up and running? all the way to, hey, is the SSL certificate about to expire of this web server? So if you have your own website and you just wanna make sure it's always up, you can use Uptime Kuma to use that as well. And you can even tell if your SSL certificate is about to expire and a bunch of really basic things like that. And so it's a great starter application for people who don't need all of Zabbix and don't wanna jump in that hole. What I would really recommend doing is starting with something like Uptime Kuma because it's so easy to deploy and kind of get started before you move on to Zabbix. Because Zabbix, while it's phenomenal, is its own beast. And then you can move from Uptime Kuma to maybe Grafana and then to Zabbix, depending on what you need. But that is number five, Uptime Kuma. I've not done a tutorial on it for Synology yet, but if people are interested, put a comment down below and I will make a tutorial and leave it linked down in the description below for that as well. Then number four is something I've shown a few different times and that is Nextcloud. Nextcloud is essentially Google Drive, but open source and way more than that. So Nextcloud is really built to be a self-hosted office replacement for Google Drive or MS365 or anything like that. It allows synchronizing files and everything like that, while also having chat and so many other features. And it is open source, which means you can deploy on anything as you grow. And Nextcloud is a great place to start. Nextcloud is gonna be a little bit more complex because you do now also have to create your own database, but it's a great learning experience. You can install the MariaDB package on Synology NAS and actually use that for Nextcloud and really get some great experience actually setting up a database while also having Nextcloud where you can easily create your own true cloud and be able to share files with external users all set up in its own nice package. Nextcloud is great and it has so many plugins. It is essentially Synology Drive on steroids. It has so many things you can add in and it is really built to scale out to massive enterprises. That's their goal and it's really easy to deploy. It can manage your calendar, it can manage everything, it can manage your chat, and it works really well and it's used by some really big corporations out there. So I would definitely check out Nextcloud because there's so much stuff that it can do. It is really, really powerful and especially the plugins can really be included to do just about anything you need. And so that's number four, Nextcloud. Really great place to start deploying stuff and it is great for that. Now number three, I'm gonna give two different options either a home assistant or home bridge. Both of these are for managing a smart home. So home assistant is really built to be super complex. It can do anything under the sun, but it takes a while to get used to. Home bridge is really focused on Apple HomeKit and is essentially duct tape that can duct tape any single smart home appliance into Apple HomeKit because there's so many plugins that are there for that. 
So this is only applicable for people who have a smart home or any smart devices, but you'd be surprised what all stuff can be plugged in via HomeBridge or Home Assistant and really to manage just everything under the sun. They're great apps to deploy and really useful to have and they are fun and can add serious value to your entire NAS setup. All right, so that's number three, Home Assistant or HomeBridge, both great smart home apps that can just really make your smart home actually smart and bring in so much additional stuff. For number two, this is really going to be useful for a NAS and just something to have around, and that is Open Speed Test. So this is their public website where you can actually use to check external connections. So as you can see, I've got pretty good download speeds here, but once we go into my upload speeds, they're going to be pretty poor. And this is really easy to deploy on your NAS, and it can just allow you to really quickly check and see your connection speed to your NAS. I will say from my experience in using this, I'd only say it's really valid to about 2.5 gigabit speeds. Trying to use this to use 10 gig speeds, it can actually be the bottleneck where you actually could get faster throughput, but just because of your browser or possibly the server code, it can't quite saturate that full 10 gig connection, but it's something that you can deploy on your NAS. And then if you're on Wi-Fi and you're trying to figure out how fast your Wi-Fi is, without having to worry about how fast your actual upload speed is or anything like that, you can really quickly just hit it and now you're testing your local network speed rather than testing on an exterior server. And so now you know, hey, is it my local Wi-Fi or is it my internet provider that is actually making this a slow connection? Really easy to deploy, really easy to set up, and it's something I will throw on a client server just to do a quick debug because it's so easy to deploy. And so that was number two. And so now number one is probably the best thing you can do if you're starting to get into a home lab space, and that is going to be Git T. Git T is open source GitHub essentially. It allows you to manage Git repositories super easily, and you can start version controlling your code and having a central repository to pull everything. I highly recommend installing Git T because it will unlock so much capability for you. And now if you are writing a script, you can just start saving it to your Git repo. And that way, boom, next time you need it, it's there and you can see what you did. It's a great habit to get yourself into, especially as you're messing with configs. Now, if one of your configs breaks, you can just see what changed and be able to go back to it and fix it so much easier. Having Git set up and using is such a valuable thing to have. And now your repos are also on the NAS. So you can also pull them on your phone as well as on any other device in your local network. And it is designed to be open up to the internet. Albeit you need to make sure you've got your security pieces there. All right, so those were my top five great Docker containers to deploy on a Synology NAS for home labbers who are really getting beginning. I did want to mention a few other ones here that are just really useful, but I didn't think were necessarily in the top five. So the first one is going to be Portainer. Portainer is essentially a web interface to manage other Docker containers better than the built-in packages. So Portainer is really often deployed, especially on like a Raspberry Pi. I don't deploy all the time on the Synology just because honestly the Synology one's fine enough, but it's great if you want to do more complex stuff. Portainer people love it. And then on the side of that is Watchtower. Watchtower can make sure that your Docker containers are always up to date. Handbrake. Handbrake's actually a really useful thing is if you just need to be able to convert a video really quick, you can use Handbrake, upload it to Handbrake, it'll convert it and you pull it right off. That way, if you're on the road and just need to do it, it doesn't need to be in a short turnaround time or anything, it can be quite useful just to have that. It's got a great web interface. Then Zabbix and Grafana. Zabbix is a very complex monitoring solution that I use to actually monitor all my client NASs. So if one of their hard drives starts getting too warm, I get an email notification about it. It is incredibly complex, but incredibly powerful. Grafana is really about metrics and seeing data. So people will build these insane dashboards. I personally like Zabbix because it's really set up for monitoring. But if you want to have a lot of data and you want to see the data in a pretty way, Grafana is phenomenal for that. Next up is Juniper Labs. Juniper Labs is a great IDE for Python. So you can deploy an entire Python workspace 
on your NAS. And so especially if you're learning Python and you wanna be able to run these things that are gonna last for a long time, you can run them on the NAS and then walk away and it will keep running on the NAS. Juniper Labs is great for that. And so you can just always have your same workspace no matter what computer you're on. And finally, Unify Controller. Instead of spending 300 bucks on a Unify Cloud Key, or maybe 200 bucks, however much they are, you can just set up on a Synology NAS and boom, you're managing all of your Unify devices that easily. I deploy this container more so than anything else just because it's really quick and easy to do the basic settings for that. All right, well, that's gonna be it for this video. I would love to hear your favorite Docker containers to deploy on a Synology NAS down in the comments below. If you have any questions, you can put those down there as well. If you want to hire me for a project, there's a link for that down in the description below. And I'm also going to throw in any other tutorials I've made for these things for Synology NAS. And if you really want me to make a tutorial on any of the other ones, put them down there and I will make them hopefully. All right, well, that's going to be it. Have a good one. Bye.